Welcome back to Plug Life Television. The number of EVs in the UK and across Europe continues to grow at an astonishing pace. So, with so many new electric vehicle drivers on the road, I thought today would be a perfect opportunity to go back to basics and answer a question that will be on a lot of people's minds. What are all of the different plugs for electric vehicles and how do they affect the charging speed? Which ones are right for me? I should start out by pointing out that this is a guide for the European market. The USA and China use different charging formats. Charging of electric vehicles can be split into two very different formats. The first of these is destination charging, which makes up the vast majority of most people's charging sessions. Bring your own cable, drive up, plug in, walk away and come back to a fully charged car once you've done working, shopping, sleeping, etc whilst adhering to any time limits on the charge point at that location, and being courteous to other drivers by moving your fully charged vehicle as soon as possible. There are two types of destination charging plug that you will encounter, Type 1 and Type 2. These are both alternating current, or AC, connections, just like the power that comes out of your domestic sockets at home. A destination charge point is fed AC current by the national grid. When an electric vehicle is plugged into it, AC current is fed into the vehicle's onboard charger which converts the current to direct current, or DC, which is then fed into the battery pack. Type 1 sockets are found on the likes of the Mark 1 Nissan Leaf, the Mark 1 Kia Soul, the Vauxhall Ampera, the Mitsubishi iNeve, and the Nissan ENV200 van. Depending on the car's onboard charger, Type 1 can support a maximum of 7 kilowatts of charging power. Type 2 is found on pretty much every other car on the market, including the Mark 2 Leaf and Soul, Teslas, Volkswagens, BMWs, MGs, Minis, Hyundais, Renault Zoes, and the Kia e Nero, to name just a few. Again, depending on the onboard charger, Type 2 can support a maximum of 22 kilowatts, although 7 kilowatts is far more common. Type 2 has won the format war over Type 1. The maximum power that is supported by either format is the minimum of the power supply to the charge point and the rating of the vehicle's onboard charger. Destination charge points are usually 7 kilowatts if they have a single phase power supply, like most domestic power supplies in the UK, or 22 kilowatts if they have a three phase power supply. In Scotland, three phase destination charge points are increasingly common. Most electric vehicles have a 7 kilowatt onboard charger, but there are some exceptions. Renault Zoe's can max out a three phase destination charge point, but most plug in hybrids only have a 3.7 kilowatt onboard charger. Furthermore, the original LEAF's standard onboard charger was 3.3 kW, with the 6.6 kW charger being an optional extra. For example, if a destination charge point is only single phase, and a Renault Zoe with a 22 kW onboard charger plugs into it, the Zoe will only get 7 kW of power. Similarly, if a destination charge point is 3 phase, but a standard Mark 1 Nissan LEAF with a 3.3 kW onboard charger plugs into it, the LEAF will only receive 3.3 kW of power. Therefore, if an electric vehicle has the option to upgrade to a higher power or three-phase onboard charger, this is a very useful option that will slash destination charge times significantly. Most destination charge points in Europe require you to bring your own charging cable. Regardless of whether you have a Type 1 or Type 2 socket on your vehicle, there will be a Type 2 socket on the charge point itself, so your cable will either be Type 1 to Type 2 or Type 2 to Type 2. Make sure to keep this in the boot at all times, and make sure that your vehicle is supplied with one when you buy it. On a related note, your vehicle should also be supplied with a domestic charging cable to allow you to plug into a standard household socket. The maximum charging power you will get from this is about 2.2 kilowatts, but it's a useful backup. Keep it in the boot, and make sure that your vehicle is supplied with one when you buy it. Rapid charging is a very different format, for which a much more familiar mentality is required. Treat rapid chargers like petrol pumps. The cable is tethered to the rapid charger, much like a petrol nozzle is to a petrol pump. Stay with or near the car whilst charging, take only what you need and move on immediately. The two main rapid charging formats are CHAdeMO and CCS. Both of these are DC or direct current, and their high power cables are tethered to the charger. The rapid charger takes an AC feed off the national grid. DC current is fed from the charger straight to the car's battery bypassing the car's onboard charger, and therefore allowing a much higher charging power to be delivered to the vehicle. Vehicles that use CHAdeMO include both the Mark 1 and Mark 2 Nissan Leaf, the Mark 1 Kia Soul, the iMeve, and the ENV200 van. 
CCS is used by the Mark II Kia Soul and just about every other EV on the market, including Volkswagens, the Tesla Model 3, the BMW i3, Hyundai's, the Kia e Niro, the MG ZS EV, the Peugeot E208, the Vauxhall Corsa E and the Jaguar I-Pace. CCS is winning the format war in Europe. If CCS looks somewhat familiar, that's because the upper part has a Type 2 socket for destination charging, hence the name Combined Charging System. The two large DC pins at the bottom are used for rapid charging. As with destination charging, the maximum power delivered during a rapid charge is the lesser value of the maximum power of the rapid charger and the maximum power supported by the vehicle. Up until 2020, most EVs and rapid chargers topped out at 50 kW on CHAdeMO or CCS, but we're starting to see 150 kW CHAdeMO and CCS chargers being installed, and even 350 kW CCS rapid chargers from the Ionity network. The Mark I Hyundai Ionic can allegedly reach 80 kW during rapid charging, whilst the I-Pace, 62 kWh Leaf, and the Peugeot E208 can reach charging speeds of 100 kW. The Porsche Taycan is designed to accept up to 350 kW of power via CCS. There are some exceptions to the rapid charging rule. The Tesla Model S and X are equipped with a modified Type 2 socket, which can accept either AC or DC current. DC is provided by Tesla's proprietary supercharger standard, which is compatible with Tesla's only, and can deliver power at up to 120 kW. With the use of a CHAdeMO adapter, the Model S and X can charge on a universal rapid charger at up to 43 kW, whilst the CCS adapter allows the car to charge at up to 120 kW on a universal rapid charger. The Tesla Model 3 comes fitted with CCS as standard, so can't use the CHAdeMO adapter and doesn't need the CCS adapter. Furthermore, the Model 3 can't use the proprietary DC Type 2 connector on superchargers. Instead, Tesla have added CCS plugs to their superchargers, which again are only compatible with Teslas, and which support up to 250 kilowatts of charging power. The Model 3 can also use CCS on universal rapid chargers. The Mark I Renault Zoe is unique when it comes to rapid charging, because it does not use a DC rapid charging format, and instead uses a Type 2 AC socket twinned with either a 22 kilowatt or 43 kilowatt onboard charger. Therefore, it is not compatible with CHAdeMO or CCS. However, it can hoover up electrons from a three-phase Type 2 destination charge point at 22 kW, which is faster than most other cars on the market. Many universal 50 kW rapid chargers in Europe have a tethered Type 2 plug on them, rated at a maximum of 43 kW. This exists purely because of the Renault Zoe. This design choice by Renault has led to the car's biggest drawback, and it all comes down to the plug locking protocols used by various charging formats. DC formats are locked in place by the charger, whilst AC formats are locked in place by the car. The logic behind this is that DC rapid charging cables are always tethered to the charger, but AC cables are designed for bring your own cable charge points, which a driver may leave their car on overnight. So having the cable locked in place whilst the car is locked prevents cable theft. This means that when a car has finished DC rapid charging, the charger unlocks the plug, so even if the car has been abandoned, it can be unplugged and used by another vehicle. Conversely, if a vehicle finishes charging on AC, the cable remains locked in place by the car, so it cannot be unplugged. As a side note, Type 1 doesn't always automatically remain locked on some models, so remember to engage the cable lock switch on your car. Using a destination charging format as a rapid charging format has presented an issue for the Mark 1 Zoe. The presence of a Type 2 tether plug on a universal rapid charger means that many PHEVs, which tend to be fitted with Type 2 sockets and sold by dealers who don't teach the difference between destination and rapid chargers, drive up to them, see a Type 2 plug, and think, if it fits, I sit. The PHEV then sits sucking about 3 kilowatts through a straw for a period of several hours, often despite destination charge points being nearby. When a Renault Zoe turns up, it can't use the rapid charger because it's blocked by the abandoned PHEV, which is using the rapid charger as a destination charge point, with the tether cable locked in place by the car. Even if it's fully charged, the cable can't be released until the PHEV's driver returns. Thankfully, most rapid chargers can deliver a charge on AC and DC simultaneously. This is true of most of Charge Place Scotland's rapid chargers. However, this problem is made worse on networks and chargers which can't supply a charge on AC and DC simultaneously. An abandoned PHEV on Type 2 paralyzes the whole rapid charger, so when a DC rapid charging EV turns up, it can't use the charger until the PHEV is finished charging. Thankfully, some networks have introduced an overstay penalty, so the abandoned car will accrue a financial penalty that is automatically applied to the user's card or account, which should quickly deter them from doing this again. There has been some confusion at rapid chargers for new EV drivers with CCS-equipped vehicles. 
They turn up at the rapid charger, see the Type 2 cable, and think that it's the correct one for their car because it fits in the upper part of the CCS socket. However, as discussed earlier, this is incorrect because Type 2 supplies AC current to the car, meaning that the limiting factor of the charging speed will be the size of the onboard charger, which in most CCS equipped vehicles is small. This means that it will take several hours to charge the car on a rapid charger using the Type 2 cable, so as a rule of thumb, CCS equipped vehicles should avoid the Type 2 cable on rapid chargers. Instead, look for the CCS cable, since this bypasses the car's onboard charger and delivers the highest possible charging power and therefore the quickest possible charging time. Remember, just because there's a Type 2 plug on a rapid charger doesn't mean that it will rapid charge your car. Your car's onboard charger is the limiting factor. Only Renault Zoe Q models can draw the full 43 kilowatts from a Type 2 cable on a rapid charger. So if you need to rapid charge, use a DC connection. And if you don't need to rapid charge, use a nearby destination charge point and keep the rapid charger free for people who need it. Finally, if you're looking to buy an EV, beware of a few examples that don't come with rapid charging as standard, or don't come with rapid charging at all. The Nissan LEAF and ENV200 in the entry-level Vizia specification do not come with rapid charging as standard, and max out at 6.6 kilowatts via their Type 1 destination charging connector. Renault's vans have thus far never been equipped with rapid charging, so the Kangoo ZE's maximum charge speed is just over 7 kilowatts. The new Skoda CityGo E has a CCS rapid charging option, but this is not included on the entry-level model, which only has a 7.2 kilowatt onboard charger. Older smart EVs only had a 7 kilowatt charger, although the latest models have a 22 kilowatt three-phase onboard charger. The Mercedes B250e would have sold in much higher numbers if it was fitted with rapid charging. Unfortunately, Mercedes only offered a Type 2 port with an 11 kilowatt onboard charger, although a company in the US called Quick Charge Power has developed a Charimo retrofit option. Finally, it's worth noting that the new 50 kilowatt hour Zoe has optional CCS rapid charging, which I would strongly recommend because it's not only twice as fast as the now standard 22 kilowatt onboard charger, but opens up access to more rapid chargers, including the likes of Instavolt, which is DC only. So there we go, I promise you, even though it seems daunting to begin with, it's so easy when you know how. In fact, if you want to be let into a little secret, I only used a public charge point for the first time after five years of driving an electric vehicle. And even then, I only did it because I was curious. I always charged at home and, and that was enough for me. So yeah, when I first did it, I was apprehensive as well. I didn't know what all of the different charging formats were, but I, I figured it out. And as I say, it genuinely becomes second nature. And especially now that uh, CCS and Type 2 are winning the format war in Europe, everything is going to become cleaner and more simplified. But don't get me wrong, you know, you'll always have your support for Type 1 because the public charge end of the cable is always Type 2. So that will be compatible with all of the socketed charge points. And as for Chadimo, that's not going anywhere anytime soon. That's going to be around for years. So don't be afraid to buy a Leaf for a Mark 1 Solar or an ENV200 van or anything like that. You know, they're still going to be well supported. So I hope that answers your question. See you again soon for another episode of Plug Life Television.